Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the first four prep talks on this carnivore challenge. And today I'm super excited because I came up with a huge list of tips for you to be successful on this way of eating. Unfortunately, there's a lot of them. I think I have 34 tips, so bear with me as we get through them. A lot of them are super quick and we're gonna move through them quickly. But I think once you hear this list, you're gonna be like, okay, I think I have it all now. <laughs> so we still have more videos to come, but this one will be accumulation of the things that we've talked about and a bunch of things that you just need to keep in the back of your mind or you need to prep to make sure you're prepared for the 30 day challenge. So let's get started. The first tip I have for you is a major tip and that is to transition slowly. I've mentioned this a couple times, but use this final week to make sure you're cutting all the sugar and the highly refined, highly processed foods out of your diet. And the reason why I suggest you do this is because this will help your body and the organs in your body transition a little bit more slowly because they have a lot of work to do to heal us over the next 30 days. And withdrawal is a real thing. A lot of people that eat the standard American diet have been filling their bodies with carbs and sugar and highly processed foods. When we take that out of our body, we do go through withdrawal. It's a true sugar withdrawal, carb withdrawal, and it doesn't feel so good. So if you can do it slowly, then your withdrawal symptoms won't be nearly as difficult to work through. And I'll talk about what those symptoms look like. One thing to keep in mind is insulin signals your cells to grow, your fat cells. Then the carbs that you ingest fuel those growing fat cells. And so insulin and carbs work together and they are the ones that cause us all of our problems. And then you add the veg and the fruits in there with all the poisons in them and then it's just a whole calamity of errors, right? So we're gonna get rid of all the carbs and we're gonna get rid of all the veg and the fruits that are trying to kill us and then that's where we're gonna start to see healing. So when we minimize those carbs, that is when our fat cells are no longer gonna be growing because we've minimized that insulin with, with a very, very low carb plan that we're gonna be on. And then it allows our fat cells to shrink and that's when you're gonna see your body change composition and you're gonna lose the weight and you're gonna have all the healing as well. So that was a big one. So I promise the rest of them won't go that long. The second one we've talked about and that's to prioritize protein. This is a diet where we are not gonna lose our muscles. And our muscles are super important, especially as we're aging. Any of you that are past the age of 30, it's kind of downhill from there when it comes to your muscle mass. This diet, because we're prioritizing the protein, we're getting a minimum amount of protein in every day. And we talked about that that's like one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight. When we see that, that's where we're gonna maintain our muscles which is super important to our longevity. And that protein's gonna come in the form of meats, it's gonna come in the form of eggs if you can tolerate eggs, and then for those of you adding seafood that can add seafood, that is also a decent type of protein as well. Not as good as meats, but it is, it's good and it gives us a variety. I do wanna mention that there's different levels of beef, right, and meats, and some of them are regular meats that you find on sale, and then there's some that are as great as grass-fed, grass-finished beef. You need to decide what you can afford, and it's a completely personal choice. Eating meats instead of all that highly processed stuff is way better than anything else you could do. So if you can't afford to do organic, grass-fed, grass-finished beef or meats, then don't sweat it you're still doing way better for your body by just eating meats. I shop what's on sale. And if the grass-fed, grass-finished beef is very close in price to the regular beef, then I'll buy that. But most of the time I am buying whatever looks good. I like the fatty cuts of meat because I'm trying to maintain the fat ratios but I am also not trying to go broke, so I do buy what's on sale or buy what seems reasonable. I will say with regard to processed meats, again, we're trying to stay minimally processed on this way of eating. However, if all you can afford are things that are processed, but they're meats, so you know, hot dogs, sausages, things like that, then do it. If that's what you can afford, then do it, because again, that's better than boxed 
foods and highly processed foods. So do what you can. And sometimes it's nice to have an occasional meat that is not just ground beef, steaks, or hamburgers, as an example. Just read those ingredient lists and make sure you don't see sugar in there. You don't see 500 ingredients. You want something that's gonna show the meat that it is, maybe salt, water, and they may have onion or garlic in them. And as long as you can tolerate those, then you can eat those. Again, the more whole meats that you can eat in this first 30 days, the better off you'll be. But hey, we all need variety, so you do what's best for you on this plan. All right, we're on to number three. And this one is a reminder that we are fueling with fat. Fat is what's gonna give us our energy. So we wanna make sure that we're having, again, that one-to-one -one ratio of protein to fat as a minimum. When I say as a minimum, some of you may need more fat to really heal, especially if you have lots of hormonal issues or any diseases that you're trying to heal with this plan. So don't eat those super lean meats. Don't eat white chicken breast and don't eat super lean cuts of meat. You want the meat with the fat on it. It has the, that gristle and the, and the fat on it has the fats we need, it has the collagen we need. That really will heal us. And I promise you over time, you're going to look forward to those fattier cuts of meat, even if you aren't so excited about it at the beginning. So it, it's kind of an acquired taste. By the end of the 30 days, you will probably be like, oh, that fatty piece of ribeye, that's what I'm looking for. If you are still hungry, and you don't feel like you're full on this plan, which doesn't happen very often, but if it does, up your fats, because what's gonna give you the energy and that's what's gonna make you feel full. All right, I already mentioned this, but this is number four, one to one ratio of fat to protein, up to two to one ratio. So again, if you are feeling like you need more, then you can increase that those fats a little bit, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. All right, number five. As I mentioned the other day, no dairy if you can manage it. Now, I know I have a lot of coffee drinkers that are gonna be like, oh no, I cannot have black coffee in the morning. And if that is you, then take a tablespoon of heavy whipping cream. You want full fat if you're gonna go with dairy. But again, keep that dairy to a minimum and try and cut it out if you can for at least the first 30 days, then slowly introduce it introduce it on its own with nothing else and see how it makes your body feel. I cannot do dairy. I will leave dairy behind for the next 30 days. No nuts. So I think that's probably pretty intuitive. Nuts are not carnivore, but some people are like, nuts are keto, so can we have them on carnivore? Not for the first 30 days. Again, we are doing a carnivore challenge, and so we wanna make sure we're eating carnivore foods and nuts are not those. Nuts are also very inflammatory for a lot of people. They're very hard to eat the right amount because you really only want a few of them and they're kind of like chips in some ways. You just keep on, keep on going. All right, we are on to number seven. And seven is about sweeteners. Because this is an elimination diet, we want to cut out anything that's going to trigger us and anything that might cause us inflammation. Sweeteners, even natural sweeteners, are one of those things that we may want to cut out in the first 30 days. If you can eliminate all sweet tastes, that's going to help you overcome your cravings and it's going to really help you in the long run. If you absolutely cannot give up this taste of sweet and you promise me it won't trigger you to eat other things, then use allulose, A-L-L-U-S. L-O-S-E. And if you're interested in allulose, because it has a lot of really good benefits, search for Dr. Benjamin Bickman. And he goes into a study that he's done. He is a doctor, but he studies fat and he studies insulin and things that impact fat. He talks about a study that was done on allulose and how it actually impacts insulin positively and helps to reduce your insulin. Allulose is a good option. Also stevia, but you don't want powdered stevia because that usually has other ingredients in it and sometimes even dextrose, which is a form of sugar. So you wanna use stevia glycerin. It is a pourable liquid stevia and you wanna make sure that the only thing in there is stevia glycerin. That is a good option as well. Keep in mind stevia is much, much sweeter than any sugar that you could have. So you wanna minimize that as well and try and just use that maybe once a day don't be using it everything that you eat every meal. It is a slippery slope. On to number eight, 
and that is eat salt. Salt is going to help us because you are gonna be shedding a ton of fluid. You need that salt in your system because you aren't holding on to salt anymore in your body. So your body will need the salt. Redmond's Real Salt is a great salt because they have a specific place that they get the salt from and you're not gonna get like plastics and all bad ingredients in there. Redmond's Real Salt is all that I use, but you can also use Himalayan pink salt. Just make sure you get the purest form of salt you can get do not use table salt that does have plastics and other nasty stuff in it. So stay away from that if you can. All right, number nine, no supplements are needed. So for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, what do I need to go out and get? You really don't need to get anything. If it makes you feel better, you can take a multivitamin supplement. But really, if you're eating beef, Beef is an amazing food and I will put an illustration up here that shows you all the vitamins and nutrients that are in beef. The Really the only thing it doesn't have is a lot of vitamin C. It does have some vitamin C. Again, if you wanna take a multivitamin supplement to make yourself feel better, absolutely do that. You do not need anything else on this plan, especially if you're gonna eat organ meats and make sure that you're eating beef and eggs and things like that. It seems like whatever is not in beef is in eggs. So if you can eat both of those, you'll be great. And if not, again, take a multivitamin if it makes you feel better. Now I say no supplements, but my next one is electrolytes. And you will need electrolytes at some point, especially in the first 30 days. But most carnivores take electrolytes throughout their time because again, you won't have any excess fluid that all those carbs are holding onto in your body. And so you're gonna need to maintain that electrolyte balance. And electrolytes are magnesium, potassium, and salt. So you wanna make sure that you're getting plenty of that. There's tons of supplements out there. Make sure they don't have sugar in them. Try and get them unsweetened, unflavored if you can. Element has a great one, that's LMNT. That is what I use and that's what my husband uses, but he also likes Keto 1000, which is a powdered electrolyte in a tub that you can get from Amazon. So get whatever works well for you. There's also Keto Chow. There's other ones that are out there. So just look for a good electrolyte supplement. You don't wanna be racing out to get that when you need it. You will need it for your carb withdrawals and it helps with cravings as well. When you reduce all that fluid in your system, your inflammation is then reduced as well. And I think I have electrolytes on my list twice. So we'll see it because I might talk about it again later on. Number 11 is seafood. If you're adding seafood and seafood does doesn't give you any issue that maintains that good omega-3 level in your bodies and omega-3s are good as we all know. Fatty salmon is great for that and it also give that good fat to protein ratio as well. I mentioned earlier that organ meats are good when it comes to nutrients and they are very high in nutrients. It is not something that you should or need to have every day. It is suggested that you have it two to three times a week. And a lot of people don't like the taste of organ meat. I am one of those people, so I will hide it in my ground beef. I'll take a couple tablespoons of beef liver and I'll grind it up in my ground beef and then I don't even taste it. Do whatever you can. There is also a supplement out there and I will include that in the description box below. It's an organ supplement. It comes in a little pill. If you really cannot do organ meats, you might wanna consider doing that to make sure you're getting those great nutrients that are in organ meats. All right, number 13, watch those condiments and sauces. You really wanna try and minimize those as best you can, but if you're going to have some, you wanna make sure that they don't include any seed oils, vegetable oils, any sugars, or a bunch of ingredients where we don't know what they are and that means that they're more processed and not as close to the whole food that we're looking for. A lot of people make them themselves so you can do some research on YouTube or whatever channel you like to, to research on and find some homemade mayonnaise and homemade sauces for your steak and things along those lines. There's a lot of great ones out there. Next one, number 14, is going to restaurants. If you can avoid it during the first 30 days, you will be so much better off. However, if you cannot avoid restaurants, restaurants in the first 30 days. I know a lot of us go to restaurants a lot of the time. Make sure that you are advocating for yourselves at those restaurants because they mostly cook in seed oils. They use sugar and different spices to make everything taste really good because that's what gets people coming back, right? So make sure you're telling your waiter that you are allergic to seed oils, sugars, and all grains. And that way they're not going to add those things to your food in a lot of cases. If you're going to a place that doesn't care, then you may 
be out of luck, but just try to minimize those restaurants as best you can in the first 30 days. It is not something that you're doomed to never go to a restaurant for the rest of your life. I go to restaurants, I just prioritize the meats, and then I also will make sure that they use butter instead of seed oils when they're cooking my meats and things along those lines. So not the end of the world. All right, moving right along. I promised you this the other day. I wanted to tell you how to handle naysayers. And there will be people in your family, in your friend group that are gonna be like, are you crazy? You're doing an all meat diet. Don't you know you're gonna die from that? <laughs> and people say the craziest things while they eat donuts, cakes, cookies, and all that other processed crap, right? But they're gonna give you a hard time for eating meat. I would suggest you tell them that you're doing an elimination protocol to help heal the inflammation in your body. No one can really argue with that. It is a true statement. They don't need to know all the details. And then it just prevents you from having to explain yourself over and over and get people that are gonna get on their soapbox and try and discourage you. We need to stay uplifted. We need to work with each other. Make sure you're commenting all the questions and comments and stuff here, and that'll help you get through this. All right, number 16, don't quit too soon. A lot of people give up at like the two week, three week mark, and that is before you're really getting all that healing, and it's really before you're seeing all those benefits. So stick with this for at least 30 days. I guarantee, well, I shouldn't guarantee, right? I am almost 100% sure that when you get to the end of the 30 days, you're gonna be like, I am not gonna stop this. This is fantastic. And then you're gonna continue on for the next 30 days or the next 30 after that. So you'll be on this 90 days or for a lifetime. And I hope that's what this ends up being for you is a lifetime of healthy eating. Just keep in mind that some of you will see results in a few days, some of you will see results in a few weeks, but some of you may take a few months if you have a lot of healing to do. And every person is different and it's, there's no explanation on why it works fast for some and why it doesn't for others, but just stick with this for the long haul, okay? 30 days, anyone can do 30 days. Okay, number 17. Again, we know what our, our macros are, but we don't need to track and measure everything. The beauty of this plan is that you really don't need to do that. It's just to give you a general guideline and it's more to help you not under eat, especially protein and fat. But you do wanna eat until you're comfortably full. And that's what a lot of people, as you do your research, you'll hear a lot of people say, eat until you're comfortably full. Some like Dr. A Anthony Chafee, he'll say, eat until it no longer tastes good. So when you dig into a steak and you're like, oh my gosh, this steak is so amazing, if, if you like steak, a lot of people do. And so you're eating that steak and you're like, oh my gosh, this tastes amazing and you're eating it and eating it, and then all of a sudden you get to a point where you're like, hmm, doesn't taste that good anymore. That's when you're probably done. Just keep that in mind. It's a good way to kind of listen to your body and let your body help you determine when you're full. Now, if you've only eaten three bites, you're probably not listening to your body. You're probably listening to your mind there. You wanna just make sure you're prioritizing that protein and also getting in enough fat for the day. But that's a good rule of thumb is to eat until you're comfortably full and then also eat until it no longer tastes good to you. All right, so the next one is important and I don't know that I've mentioned it in my previous videos, but you want to eat two to three meals a day, and I'll leave that part up to you, but you don't want to snack in between. You do want your body to be releasing some of that fat and reducing some of those fat cells and reducing some of that inflammation out in between your meals. And there's a lot of really good things that happen in between meals and a lot of the healing happens there. So don't be snacking all day long. You want to have a meal and you want to wait four hours and then have another meal and then wait four hours and have another meal. Overnight, you want there to be about 12 to 16 hours in between. If you can go 18, even better, but then you're probably gonna be around two meals a day in that scenario. So some of you may say, well, what if I wanna do intermittent fasting? And that is kind of a form of intermittent fasting. Anytime you're going 12 hours or more, that's considered a form of intermittent fasting. Now, intermittent fasting is a trigger for people that are typically binge eaters. And a lot of people that are successful on carnivore are prior binge eaters. And with a 
fasting regimen where you're gonna eat maybe one meal a day or you're gonna eat in a four hour window once a day, that can really trigger those binge eaters because it feels like you're binge eating because you have to get all that food into one meal or over a four hour period. And it's very hard to do that and you feel like you're kind of stuffing everything in. Be careful with intermittent fasting, especially in the first 30 days. Just let your body heal in those first 30 days. Again, get that four, three to four hours in between meals and then get that at least 12 hours overnight. But try not to do too much other fasting, at least for the first 30 days. And you may want to try it out later on in this program as you get further down the road, but I wouldn't suggest it in your first 30 days. And I'm not saying that there aren't benefits to intermittent fasting. They talk about the autophagy that is supposed to be beneficial in a lot of ways with anti-aging and also with some of the skin that may sag if you have a lot of weight to lose. They say that it can help minimize that excess skin and things along those lines. So I'm not saying fasting doesn't have a place. It doesn't have a place for me. It may not have a place for you at least in the first 30 days, but I'm not saying that it isn't something that you could consider later down the road. All right, we're on to number 19. And number 19 is drink that water. So as I mentioned, you're gonna have a lot of fluid release in that first two weeks and it's gonna be real heavy in the first few days. And that's where you're gonna feel so much better because those carbs hold on to all that fluid in your body. When it releases, it's like all oh, your joints start to feel better and your energy is better and your sleep is better. So that fluid has a lot to do with it. But you need to be replenishing that fluid. You don't wanna get dehydrated at the same time. And also you want to be helping to flush out all those toxins that are left over from the plants and fruits that we've eaten and also all the excess carbs that are kind of sitting in our body. And we're gonna flush all that out. So we're gonna drink lots of water throughout the day, every day on this plan. All right, we're on to number 20. And number 20 is gonna make me very unpopular, but you do not want to have any alcohol on this program and you don't wanna have any pop. I'll go with alcohol first. So alcohol is almost worse than any sort of sugar that you can ingest. Your body prioritizes breaking that down first and so it will store anything else that you have in your body because it's trying to get that alcohol, which is a poison, out of your body. There are so many things out there about alcohol and why you should not be drinking alcohol, but definitely not in this first 30 days where we are healing and your body's in this raw phase where it's trying to help get rid of all the unwanted bad poisons in your body and all that inflammation and then also, when you don't have all that fluid, extra fluid in your body that the carbs are holding on to, you actually are highly impacted by alcohol. So when you have one drink, maybe as a standard American diet eater, you are fine. If you're on the carnivore way of eating and you have a drink, it will go right to your head. <laughs> Be careful there. So if you have to have a drink at some point during this first 30 days, then just be careful of that. It will hit you like a ton of bricks, but it is very unhealthy for you. And so you may see a stall, you may see some of the aches and pains. A lot of people feel like they're hit by a Mack truck when they drink on this plan. So just keep that in mind. And then the pop. Pop is one of those things, especially since a lot of us drink diet pops and you could only drink diet pop if that was gonna be something you had to have. If you drink pop, you will see your weight come off slowly or maybe have some stalls. So there is something about diet pops that are triggering your body and it's causing inflammation and things along those lines. So keep the pop out of your body if you can. You can't have any sugar, so there's no full sugar pops for sure. But if you have to have a pop and it's a diet pop, just keep that in mind that it is probably gonna cause you to stall or just not lose weight as fast and probably not feel as good as well. So that brings up other drinks. So coffee and tea. Coffee and tea are technically not carnivore. However, if you drink coffee or if you have a cup of tea in the morning and you don't think you can live life happily without it, then I am of the belief that you need to do what is going to be tolerable for you. You've got a lot of changes going on in the first 30 days. Taking out your coffee might be one of those things like it's just too much. For me, it's too much. I drink one cup of coffee now. I drink it black. I'm perfectly satisfied with that. Mine is more of a ritual for me. I'm kind of a go, go, go person. And that cup of coffee for me just lets me kind of breathe in the morning and I sit with my little puppies and I have my cup of coffee. And it's more of a ritual that keeps me grounded and gives me joy in my life. 
so I'm not willing to give up my coffee. Have I done it? Yes, I've done it for six months at a time. And I, I don't even absolutely love the taste of coffee. It's just something that it's, it's something I like to have in my hand. And yes, I've tried mushroom coffees and all sorts of different things. I just like coffee. Same goes with tea. It is made out of plants because they're made out of leaves as well. And if you can cut them out, great. If you can't, then I think a cup of tea here and there is gonna be just fine. Keep in mind that if for some reason you are not healing or you feel bad after you drink coffee, because now that your body is cleared out of all this extra fluid and all this inflammation, and then you put something like coffee, it's a stimulant and it comes from beans. If it causes you pain or causes you a lot of bloat, then maybe you give that up or at least wean yourself off of it slowly so that you can get that out of your system. Because again, any sort of inflammation is gonna make everything harder for you on this plan. All right, number 22. It's optimal if you can eat ruminant meats on this plan, but you can still have pork, you can still have seafood. I would keep those more as like sides, small sides, just to keep some variety in. They don't necessarily bother everybody, but some people can be sensitive to pork and some people can be sensitive to seafood. So if you can prioritize the ruminant meats, you're better off doing that. Number 23, that is meal slip ups. We may all have a slip up here and there. We may have somebody come in from out of town and take us to a restaurant that doesn't have a lot of really good options, or we may show up at someone's house and they have all vegetables, <laughs> whatever it may be, and you slip up that's all it is. It's a one meal slip up and you may feel a little bit bad the next day or even in the next few hours and you may feel a little bit more aches and pains. You may have trouble sleeping. You may have some bloat, but it gets out of your system. Drink a lot of water, get it out of your system and refocus for the next day. It is not a reason for you to give up this plan because we all will have slip ups. And the beauty of this plan in my mind is that this was the first program where when I had slip ups, when I went on vacation, when I went on a cruise, I didn't gain weight. And I normally gain 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds on a cruise because you're eating all the crap that's on there. Granted, I do think I made some better choices, but I didn't stay 100% carnivore and I drank a lot on the cruise. So I think that this plan allows for us to have an occasional slip up and it allows us to get right back into it and it allows us to continue that healing. So just don't use a slip up as a reason to ditch this program because there is too much for you to gain on this program. Number 25, be consistent. Even if that means you're gonna have the same meals every day, just be consistent, drink your water, eat your meats, get your fats in, and be consistent with this program. That is the beauty of it. It's super simple once you get going with this program. So just continue it and let it heal you. Number 26 is more of an option, but it's a super good option. And that's to get yourself a journal, make a page in your notes on your cell phone, whatever you can do, but you wanna be jotting down how you feel each day, especially at the beginning, especially in the first 30 days. You know, how did you sleep? What was your energy like? How did your joints feel? Did you have any headaches or aches and pains? So those are some of the things you wanna be jotting down. And then you can jot down what you ate that day. And again, it's gonna be fairly similar each day, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But say you have something different. So say you have seafood one day, and then you're like, the next day you notice you had some negative things happen, then those are some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to take note of. It's also super important to jot down those non-scale victories because you're gonna have a lot more of them than you're gonna have scale victories because the scale is kind of crazy. In this program, because we're prioritizing our protein and we're keeping our muscle mass on us and muscle weighs a lot more than fat, you're going to see the scale sort of hesitate a lot of the time, but you're gonna see your clothes start to fall off, you're gonna see a lot more of those non-scale victories where things fit differently and your body composition looks differently and your face composition looks different and your skin and your hair, all those wonderful things are gonna be happening. So jot those down, because those are gonna be the things that you're gonna come back to and say, yup, this is why I'm doing this program. Look at this and look at that. And oh, remember when I started not feeling my knees pains and aches in the morning when I get out of bed or my hands and my arthritis doesn't feel like it does anymore. Those are huge things that you wanna be aware of and you wanna celebrate those and then comment on this channel so that we can all celebrate with you and be excited with you because we all need encouragement and we all wanna encourage one another. So let us know. So as I mentioned, the scale, right? So number 27 is 
be careful with the scale. Weigh once a week. If you're one of those people that has to weigh every day, weigh every day, but keep in mind that you are gonna have much better idea of how you're doing based on how you're feeling and how your clothes are fitting and things along those lines. Don't let that scale dictate how you're feeling for the day or how you're feeling about this plan. A lot of people on this plan will have several days where that nothing shows on the scale and all of a sudden they'll have what is termed a whoosh where they'll lose, you know, three, four pounds all at once. And that's because the scale is really having trouble because we're trying to get our electrolytes and all of our fluids are different and we're maintaining our muscle mass and losing the fat. Just know that the scale is not perfect on this plan. It's not always our friend. All right, we're getting there. So we are in number 28. And this is where I said, I think I had this on here twice. This one is about your bad withdrawal symptoms. If you're having bad withdrawal symptoms, use electrolytes and salt everything. Symptoms of withdrawal include feeling really sluggish, like you can't get out of bed, feeling like you have a headache, flu-like symptoms. Sometimes it's trouble sleeping, which is kind of interesting because on this plan, most people have the best sleep of their lives, but maybe not initially as you're withdrawing from all those carbs. Also a big one that a lot of people get on carnivore is cramps in their legs. And that is again, an imbalance of your electrolytes. And it's from you releasing all that fluid that's been held up in your body for so long. Again, get those electrolytes, have them ready to go when you start this plan and take them from day one. And that'll really help you because you're gonna need that as you're losing all that fluid, that excess fluid that your body doesn't need. One other symptom of withdrawals that is often talked about in the carnivore community is your heart racing. Some people, all of a sudden, people go to the hospital because their heart's racing out of their chest. And that is just an electrolyte imbalance as well. Again, if you feel you need to go to the hospital, please do. I'm not trying to tell you not to go to the hospital if you feel you need to go to the hospital, but a lot of times it is an electrolyte imbalance. So take those electrolytes and see if it changes anything and then don't hesitate to see your doctor. Number 29, this one might be controversial, but if you are not regularly working out, this is not the time to start a workout regimen. I'm not saying you won't. Let your body do all this healing. I've talked about withdrawals and I've talked about all your body changing from using very easy carbs for energy to using fats for energy, which your organs need to kind of switch over and understand what you're trying to do here. Throwing a bunch of workouts in at the same time, especially when you're going to feel a little bit less energy right at the beginning and having some of those withdrawal symptoms, hold off on that workout regimen. If you'd like to walk, Walking is great for you and start a walking routine. Maybe go a little bit, but don't overdo it. Don't stress yourself out. This is a stressor when you change a way of eating, especially at the beginning, but eventually you're gonna wanna work out and you're gonna have so much energy that you're gonna be great at working out. And because of all the protein we prioritize, your workouts are gonna be better than ever. Just hold off on that for the first few weeks at least, okay? All right, we're at number 30. So we're getting towards the finish line. Number 30 is get good sleep. Prioritize your sleep as well as your protein and your fat on this plan. Anywhere you read today, it talks about how important sleep is for us. It helps us with our health. It helps us preventing aging from ha happening faster than we'd like. And in this program, I think your sleep is gonna improve. Give it a week, but your sleep should improve dramatically on this program. We wanna make sure we're getting enough of it because there is a whole lot of healing that happens while you're sleeping at night. That that's when you're gonna see a lot of these great results is the next day. Get your seven to nine hours of sleep a night and make sure you're being consistent. It's better for you if you kind of go to bed at the same time every night. Do what you can. Just keep in mind that this is a really important part of your plan. All right, the next one is not gonna be a popular topic, but we're gonna talk about poop. So on this plan, you're gonna move your bowels less often on a carnivore way of eating. With a high carb, highly processed standard American diet, you're pooping all the time because your, your body is getting rid of all the crap because like there's like a tenth of the highly processed foods that your body can actually use so the rest of it's trying to get out of your body on the carnivore way of eating your body is going to use all those nutrients from the meats and the fats and so you are going to have less elimination from a pooping perspective it also is a really good way to keep an eye on how much your body is needing those fats you may see a little bit more loose stools in your first week or two. And that's because, especially if you haven't been used to eating a lot of fats, your body's adjusting to eating fats. You will see that in some cases, people have runny stools in their first couple weeks on this plan. A lot of us, and I did not have that problem, a lot of us don't have that problem. But 
what does happen eventually is you can determine what your body needs in terms of fats, more or less, based on your stools. If you are continuously having runny stools long time into this program, then you may need to cut back on your fats a little bit. Just a little bit, not a lot. You're not cutting out your fats. You're just gonna scale back a little bit. If you're having hard stools that are hard to get out, then you need more fats. And there's tons of carnivore doctors that talk about this. It's perfectly normal to not eliminate this often, and it's not gonna be large quantities because again, your body's gonna use most of what you're eating because it's all stuff your body can use. Number 32, stock your refrigerator. Plan ahead and stock that refrigerator with things that you can eat when you're hungry. And I'm talking more freezer stuff. You know, make sure you have those hamburger patties in your freezer so when you don't feel like cooking, you can just throw one of those into a frying pan, throw it on your grill, whatever it is, and you have a quick meal. Have some hard boiled eggs. Make them every Sunday for your week ahead. Hard boiled eggs are really easy to eat. They're very satisfying and they have that good fat to protein ratio in them as well. Just make sure with those frozen beef patties or any of the things that you're eating that you're just looking at the ingredients list. Anytime something comes in a box or a bag, you just wanna make sure you look at that ingredient list, make sure it doesn't have sugars in it. You really wanna have the meat and salt is usually another ingredient that's pretty benign, but just keep an eye on the ingredient list. Also, I said not to snack, but if for some reason you need to add something to your meals or you are desperate for something, then there are some really good beef sticks out there. Chomps is a good brand. There's Archer, Country Archer something. <laughs> That's a really good brand. Both of those are sold at like Costco and most of your grocery stores, you can also get them on Amazon. But there's a lot of good ones out there. Make sure they don't have sugar. They don't have any grains. They don't have things you don't want in them. And Chomps and Archer Country are, are two good ones. For our last two, they're easy ones. And I would strongly suggest number 33. And that's subscribe to carnivore Facebook groups if you're on Facebook. Follow carnivore people on Instagram if that's your preferred social media. Follow again these carnivore doctors and longtime carnivore people on YouTube as well. You really want to keep educating yourself and, and getting tweaks and different tips from different people that have similar situations to yours. And it really, really does help. For me on the Facebook carnivore groups, I'm on a carnivore beginners group, which I needed when I was a beginner. And now I am on there and helping people through their questions and their concerns. And why is this happening? And what should I do about this? And am I allowed to eat that? And now I'm the person that's helping answer some of those people. And as a beginner, it's just so refreshing to see a lot of people say, oh my gosh, this happened today. And oh, I don't have this pain anymore. And I'm off my medications and I no longer have diabetes and all these things. It is like amazing. Like sometimes I wanna be like, my gosh, are people reading this? This is amazing. It's amazing to me what eating a, a diet that your body is designed to eat and but your body is going to utilize all those nutrients. It is amazing what happens to people. So I would strongly suggest that if you're on Facebook, join a few of those groups, keeping in mind that some of them can be a little bit harsh and you've got some people on there that think they know everything about everything. They'll say, you cannot drink coffee. You cannot have dairy. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. We've talked through most of it. You know what you should and shouldn't do. And you know what things you maybe can do or maybe can try. Keep all that in mind. Social media is great to keep us moving in the right direction and keep us learning as well. And my last one is give yourself some grace with this. You may have times when you're not feeling so great. You may have times where you slip up and you, you forgot to eliminate this or you ate too much of that or whatever the case may be. Let's just keep moving forward. Let's keep encouraging one another. Keep the comments coming. Keep the questions coming and let's just see this through for 30 days and I am telling you even if you don't have every single wonderful thing that my husband and I saw and all the other carnivore people are seeing I think you'll see positive outcomes from this without a doubt I think you will see less inflammation and less pain and you'll see some weight loss and you'll see your skin get clearer and you'll see your mental health improve you'll see your energy improve so you'll get one or more of those things 
for sure. I look forward to hearing all the wonderful stories and the wonderful comments because I am looking so forward to doing this journey with you. And thanks for following today. I know it was a long video, but I wanted to get as many of the tips and tricks as I could get into one video so that you guys could be like, okay, I think I have them all now. I think I know how I'm gonna do this now. Instead of the bits and pieces that I was doing before, I tried to incorporate as much as I could all in one video. More videos to come, and we're getting very close to our August 12th start date. Again, if you're starting this later, nobody needs to know because this is YouTube and you can start this any day you want. And just when you start push play on a video, that's when you're starting. So join us no matter when it is. And I look forward to going this journey with you. Again, don't forget to subscribe. I am a small channel and I look forward to growing my channel with content like this that is helpful and brings joy to people's lives. Also, click the like button if you enjoyed this content. Also, share it with your friends. We'd love to have as many people that we can help them heal and help them lose some weight as we can. So share this out there. Also hit the notification bell and that will tell you every time a new video comes out. Keeping in mind, I have a lot of content on my channel that brings me joy. So if you see a card making video or you see a dog health video or RV video and you're not interested, just pass that one by, but you'll for sure have a carnivore video every week. So I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching.